Well, we had the Elimination Chamber show, and uh, aside from the opener, it was a four-match show. And, you know, it was exactly what you would expect if you would have done predictions. I mean, unless you wanted to go out on a limb with something and say maybe, you know, it'll be Drew McIntyre and Sammy, so may maybe Randy Orton will win. I mean, if you wanted to do something like that, you could. But it does seem to it does seem to it does seem to go off that that uh, Drew McIntyre Sammy thing as far as WrestleMania goes, though. As far as WrestleMania, yes, it yeah. does. Yeah, but um, yeah, if you if you made predictions for the show, you probably called everything because everything was where it should go. Everything was, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's funny because everything was like twenty to one odds, except for Rhea Ripley, which was like fifty to one odds. So, or maybe eighty to one, I think, at the end. But the um, yeah, so everything went. All the finishers went exactly like would have been predicted. I mean, you know, getting there was a little bit different. And they uh, seemed to set up with something with Logan Paul and Randy Orton, which was interesting. And um, and a couple other things were set up. Tiffany Stratton had a Tiffany Stratton had a kind of a breakout performance. You know, she'd been um, so far in the main roster, she'd been you know just kind of there. You know, nothing really special, and not even really. You know, but but she was over from the moment she got out there, and then she also performed great in that match. She was actually over to the point where other baby faces were beating on her and getting booed for it. Yeah. Like the fans were really into Tiffany Stratton, and they gave her a lot of spots to let her shine. They gave her the senton off the the uh, pod, I guess they call it, and yeah. a lot of big stuff like that. But before we get to that match, uh, the pre-show match. Yes, that was, it was Indy Hartwell and um, Candice LeRae against uh, the Kabuki Warriors for the tag team title. And, you know, Indy Hartwell was very over, um, you know, be, being in an Australia and everything like that. The match was fine. It was a pre-show match. I mean, there was, um, it was probably of the five matches, I would say it was, not even, it was, it was definitely the weakest of the five matches. But it wasn't like it was a bad match. It was an okay match. And, um, you know, Candice LeRae got pinned, uh, insane elbow. And uh, that was that, you know. Well, we had the Women's Elimination Chamber, and it was Becky, Naomi, Bianca, Liv, Raquel, and Tiffany. And, uh, you know, the normal chamber, two people start, new person comes in every X number of minutes, and it opened up with Becky and Naomi. And, uh, you know, they went five minutes or whatever of wrestling, and I was not impressed with Naomi in this first five minutes. She was very, very slow. And it was just, you know, the first, to me, the women's elimination chamber was like two matches. Uh, the first probably half, like the crowd wasn't super into it. I didn't think the work was very good. There was a lot of sloppiness. But really, once they got down to particularly the final three, which was Becky, Liv, and Bianca, it got pretty good at that point. But, you know, prior to that, it was hit and miss. You know, they had... Uh, stuff with Naomi wrestling, which was very slow. And then Tiffany got in there and they gave her a lot of things to shine, including the uh, sent on off the pod, as I talked about. And finally they started doing eliminations. And it's, it's very much like the Royal rumble where if you see somebody hitting a whole bunch of moves on everybody else, then you know probably on their way out eliminated. Well, and, well, the thing on this one though, is, is they did do stuff where people like kind of made, equivalent you know when they come in and do like kind of hot tags and the first run when they were out there you know like when they get in first and then they start doing their moves it's not just that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be eliminated next but generally if it's later and you see them like taking on everyone and knocking everyone down and everything like that it is usually a sign that uh they're about to go yeah so Liv hit an oblivion on tiffany and eliminated her and then Raquel started destroying everybody. She hit a double Tejano bomb on Becky and Liv, and then Bianca grabbed her KOD for the elimination. And it finally came down. Naomi was the first one eliminated, by the way. They uh, got her out, actually, before everybody was even into the cage. And then it came down to Becky, Liv, and Bianca. And at this point, it got pretty good. I mean, they had a lot of cool three-way spots, a lot of counters. And finally, Bianca goes for the KOD on Becky. Becky slips out. Liv rolls up Bianca and pins her, but then she immediately turns around, gets hit with the manhandled slam, and pinned. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I thought it was good, mostly because of the last 10 minutes or so, but the first half was pretty sloppy. I thought it was a fine oh. match. I, actually, it was a very good match, but, um, you know, 
Um, I didn't think it was the best match on the show, but um, you know, yeah, I um, I would say like it, it definitely peaked at the end. And um, the only thing that really stood out, though, I thought was um, Stratton. You know, doing some of that really flashy stuff, and um, there was a big um, bullshit chant when uh, Stratton got eliminated. So uh, you know, they that was like the the biggest negative reaction in the match, really. You know what? They didn't really care when anybody else got eliminated. No, that was the big one they really cared about. Well, we had uh, the chamber match with the men: Drew McIntyre, L.A. Knight, Kevin Owens, Logan Paul, and Randy Orton. And Drew and L.A. started, and the fans gave Drew a CM Punk chant, which, of course, you know, CM Punk had posted on Instagram how how sad he was about today. It was tough on his mental health because he was, he was winning the chamber. He was supposed to win this match. Yeah. Yeah. And he was not even in the match, so he didn't. He, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't say he was winning, did he? He didn't say he was winning, but he was winning. He, uh, yeah, I know he was winning. Yeah, yeah. So it starts out with Drew and L.A. Knight, and then we had o- Kevin Owens coming in next, and Drew McIntyre actually hit a high fly flow onto both guys off the uh, top rope, which was something else. And then uh, Lashley ends up getting in, and he got booed, even though he's a babyface, because the fans wanted Randy Orton in the ring. And so Randy comes in fourth, gets a huge pop, and he immediately hits a draping DDT on the outside, and he sells it like he broke his back again. And he really was down for probably most of the time he was in there. Like, he would hop up every now and then, do a big move, and sell the back again. But, I mean, they really kind of kept him limited. And then Logan Paul finally comes in, and he immediately gets attacked by Kevin Owens. And Kevin's pounding his ass all over, beating on him inside the uh, pod. And then Lashley spears him through a pod, which got a holy shit and a thank you Bobby chant. And then McIntyre kills him with a Claymore, so he gets eliminated. And then uh, L.A. hits his finish on everybody. And this A.J. Styles is so angry at L.A. Knight that he flew God only knows how many hours. 20 plus. All the way to Australia. That's just a long run in and hit him with a chair. Yeah, and eliminate him. He eliminated him. So it looks like that's WrestleMania. Yeah. And uh, Drew Pin Knight. And then Kevin Owens made his big comeback. And, of course, that led to uh, him getting pinned with an RKO. So it came down to Randy, Drew, and Logan Paul. So Logan ends up getting the brass knucks, which are legal because it was no DQ, which begs the question, why did you get the knucks earlier? But he didn't. So he ends up getting RKO'd and pinned. So now it is Randy versus Drew, and they're going back and forth. And Drew sets up for the Claymore, but Randy is down, acting like he can't even get to his feet. But he's playing possum. He hits the RKO. But before he can cover, Logan Paul comes back in, KOs Orton with the brass knucks. Drew covers him, gets the pin. So the world title match at Mania is Seth versus Drew which we pretty much expected. And also, apparently, Randy Orton will be facing Logan Paul. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. The um, Logan Paul. The interesting thing is, is that if it's going to go to Cody and Drew, if that's if it, if that's the direction, then it's, it's going to be interesting because do you put um, Drew over? Um, or do you have Seth beat him? Because if Seth beats him like again, which would be the, th- the third or fourth time, actually more than fourth because he beat him about 15 times on the road as well, um, you know, it's kind of like it kind of cools that off. So it's going to be interesting. You know, they could always do like interference or something like that. Well, they could also have Drew win the title and then Priest cashes in. You know what's so funny? I thought the same thing. Yeah. By the way, just to make this clear, because we always get so completely, um, what's the word, um, misrepresented, I guess that is, is the word. This is not us predicting something. This is just us both agreeing that this is a possible, this is, this is an idea. People are going to go like afterwards and they're going to go like, you said this was going to happen. And we did not say this was going to happen. So, um, Hey guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.